Hey everybody, <laughs> second time. <laughs> um, go ahead and um, I'm getting weird messages that I've never gotten before. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that, but we're just going to ignore it. Um, go ahead and let me know you're here. Remember to put your name so that I'll know who you are. And for those that are attending the meeting live, guess a number between 1 and 100. And I will pick a random person for a copy, a signed copy of. Silent Surrender coming to a retailer near you on June 5th, which is really soon. So go ahead and hi, Elizabeth. I mean, hi, Ash. Hi, Marisol. Hi, Karen. I see is here. So, um, what we have, what I have going on is the box set, first box set of the Royal Bow went free today so for five days you can pick up the first box set for free um, and then the release of silent surrender the first book and the second generation sumatras um, will be releasing on the 5th of june so look for um party and stuff going on around then uh, we'll have we'll have a big kickoff or something going on. So um, those of you that are just now coming in, go ahead and tell me a number between one and one hundred for a chance at a signed copy of Silent Surrender. However, I can't get the copies until after it releases, so it'll be probably a couple weeks after release goes. Okay, I am going to just jump right in and we're going to bring our featured author on and I'm so excited to talk to her and we're going to have so much fun and she's going to tell us what Liv is going to happen to her in the second book. She's already promised me that she would tell us that. <laughs> I know. She has not said that. <laughs> Hi. Hi, everyone. Oh, so I did I trick you? And now I got to. Look, I can see names. Okay. Hi. Hey, guys. <laughs> so I guess I'm not going to trick you into telling us what is going to happen. Nope. 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 <laughs> <You> <laughs> <can't touch. laughs> but I mean, I might tease you, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Fine. Um, so. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here with us. I have read your books and admired your writing oh, for you. so long. I love your Royal series. Thank um, you. And uh, if I could show you on my my phone, you would see all of your books in my uh, oh, library. <laughs> I use them as like um, uh, textbooks to study. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there are people who do it better. <laughs> no. So tell us a little bit about you for any readers, any of my readers out there that maybe aren't familiar with your books. Oh, sure. First of all, thank you, Elizabeth, for having me. Um, I'm super excited to be here, you guys. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, hello. I'm Nana Malone, Nana from Ghana. And Nana, I am not Nana. I'm the yeah, Ghana. Ghana. Oh, okay. Nana, yeah, Nana from Ghana. I am actually from Ghana. And oh. Um, I write sexy, feel-good romance. Uh, in this particular iteration of my career, I write royals or royals-ish. Um, so I'm smack dab in the middle of uh, this kind of like spin-off world off of my royal series right now. And I have been published since 2010. Um, current list title number 83 or 84. Oh my gosh. What, which one you're looking at? Like, if we're looking at wow. completely 83, if we're looking at in progress 84. Um, okay, yeah. I have to do, I have to do the math. <laughs> I, how many books a year is that? 
Um, in the early days, my very first book took eight years to write. That was never published. Um, the next book took six months. The next book took three months and I've gotten considerably faster. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, on average, I started really speeding up 2012, 2013, 2014. So on average, it's about nine to 15. Um, don't do 15. That's just crazy talk. Don't do that. I don't think I would be alive if I did that. <laughs> it takes um, me about three months start to finish. Yeah, I think you know, that's my average. Like a lot of people, like I think put out three to four books a year. Um, and you know do great and that's what they can do i mean it's all about what you can do usually as i'm writing it's like i've got another person talking to me and i'm like be quiet so i'm taking notes mm -hmm. you know, this mm -hmm. time, like, with your turn yes Perfect. This so, um, that's what i add the, usually if you see me i don't even know where my tiara is right now i think my daughter stole it um but if you see <laughs> around, i usually have a tiara on <laughs> So, um, do you mind telling us which part of the country you are in? I am in San Diego, California. Um, so, um, the land of sunshine, <laughs> so much sunshine. Uh, weather's gotten quite nice as it's about to be June soon. Um, so, yeah, SoCal uh, by transplant. <laughs> well, have I used to think that you were in the UK? Because you have such a wonderful knowledge of all things British and um, London. Yeah. So how, it, how does that work? It's my favorite city. Okay. Um, I, I, did, I did do my master's in London. So I lived there for a couple of years. Uh, so um, I draw, uh, hey, Mayor Salt, howdy in San Diego. Um, uh, so I do draw a lot from that particular time in my life. And then I visit often and I also have family that is in London. So that's usually, if I like, if ever, like I forget, um, like I'm like, oh God, what was this area? And things change frequently. Um, so like, it's funny in some books, like in my early London books, I'll talk about Brixton as like being like super gritty and urban and like where like all the underground clubs are. Now, when I go to Brixton, it's like super gentrified <laughs> and you find <laughs> like, you know, the little families with their prams in the breakfast spot. Oh. I'm like, what happened to Brixton? <laughs> <laughs> the hipsters had moved in. <laughs> oh. Well, I have never been, but it is always one of the places I've wanted to, to visit, so. Yes, when COVID, when the quarantine is lifted and it is safe to travel, I I highly recommend um, it as a city that should be definitely on your stop. It's, you know, it's weird. It's my number one city, even more so than like Paris or anywhere like that. It's my favorite. And I think, obviously, I think that's tied to the time that I lived there and the memories that I cemented there so i think that's why it's my favorite um but still it's my favorite city so tell us a little bit about your writing process Woof. oh the writing <laughs> <laughs> um, right now i i'm sighing because i'm like i'm on my last round of edits for for her benefit so um well not my last mom this is going back to my editor after the first round so uh i'm sort of feeling like no nah, because I had to add scenes and I'm like, but I'm done. Um, but generally, uh, I'm a fast drafter. So um, I'm a, a fast drafter. So someone who like pours a story out, I don't let myself edit. I just get, I just bleh. Story is out and done. It's Even not with lot, like um, dialogue and all. Yes, yeah, I, do, I do the dialogue. I do everything, but I don't allow myself to go back and edit anything. Um, I outline extensively before I write a word. Um, I usually know who the characters are in this particular round. So with Big Ben, it's the first of a whole world. Um, so I knew exactly where my cliffhangers were going to be. I know who the characters are. You've seen them before in other books of mine as like kind of mentioned characters. Um, so I knew exactly who they were in terms of at least like kind of like the foil or the archetypes. 
And then um, when I sit down to write, I, thanks to <laughs> Krav Maga, I, I hurt my shoulder years ago. So oh. I can longer type uh, for a long period of time. So I dictate. And once I have my outline, I just go. Um, and I can usually do, I mean, it depends because I'm also a mom. So whatever is going on usually circulates around that. But I can usually do um, 10,000 words a day. But that's like, that's a book. <laughs> That's a big day. I can do more, but if I do more, then I am useless for several days. Wow. So my like good day kind of like limit where I'm still functional the next day to still write is about 6,000 words. Um, so it'll take me anywhere. I mean, I can do a book in a week. I have done a book in a week um, because it was a necessity at the time because I was under contract. Um, but comfortably, it takes me about two weeks to draft something, first draft. Um, and because I dictate, it goes to my transcriber who types it all out for me. Uh, she lives in the Philippines, a uh, lovely lady. She's delightful. And um, then it comes back. And then I start the slog of the revision process, which is my least favorite thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would rather cut off my left boob than. <laughs> um, and that's the bigger one, you guys. It's the bigger one. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, so I don't love revisions, um, and the revisions usually are slated to last two weeks. Um, but you know, they tend to last about a month because I just don't want to do them. <laughs> um, I just never do. And, uh, so that's, that's never pleasant. Um, but once, uh, I do my own internal revision, then it goes to my editor. We do a couple rounds. I have, um, kind of, I don't have like any beta readers or anything like that. I don't really use those right now. Although I always, you know, modifying the process to see what will work better. Um, and then I have another editor take another kind of like gut check. Like, did I cover all the bases? Um, because when you use an editor, especially my editor is fantastic. Um, I use Angie Raymond in case anyone's listening. Um, and Angie's editing for years. Um, but it's so, and she's amazing because it's funny. I'll mention something in one book and then she'll be like, ah, 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 back in Cheeky Royal. And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. Like, a little lazy. Well, my ARC team is like that. They keep me straight. I don't know how I could do it without them. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and like, it's legit. And some of the ARC, some of the ARC people are, they're on it too. And um, so anyway, so she like usually is like, nope, inconsistency. Remember when you said this back, I'm like, what? So <laughs> it's really good. But I do, I have another like gut check reader um, in case like just it's anything. Cause like, you know, you want an editor that fits your style and also gets your style. So some of the right. she knows are stylistically what I do. And so she won't fix those, but sometimes it's like, nope, that one should have been fixed or whatever. So I'll have a gut, gut check person do it. And then it goes to my proofer. And then um, comes back to me. I make all fixes, whatever. And then it goes to ARC team. And they come back with, why did you leave us at that cliffhanger? And then I, you know, drink the tears. <laughs> <laughs> the tears of my readers. And, um, yeah. And then I publish. Basically. And do you have a support group for all the cliffhangers? Um, um, you know, sometimes, yeah. In the ARC team, there's an ARC team Facebook group. Um, they'll be in there and they'll be chatting. And then in my, in my group, um, my uh, my PA, Serena McDonald, will sometimes start like a, a post thread. And it's like, listen, if you haven't read it, this is the spoiler thread. Get off. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, sometimes people get mad. Um, so I get a lot of emails um, or DMs and I'm like, sorry, man. I got one today about the benefactor. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so uh, well. yeah. That's my basic process. Um, and um, now it's like a, it's like a machine. So, and I can, I don't often write two books at once because I get transference. Um, but if the characters are the similar enough, I can, especially if I'm on, like, if I'm under contract or something, I'll do that. Um, but generally it's one book at a time. Well, let's dive into some of the questions okay. that we have from the reader. And if anybody has a question, I'm sorry. Go ahead and post your question. Remember to put your name so that I know who you are, so that I can, so we'll know who is asking. Um, and also, just let me go ahead and remind you: if you're just now coming in, 
guess a number between one and 100 to a signed copy of Silent Surrender. Okay, so let's start. What is Bacon Buddy? Bacon Buddy. It's um, <laughs> it's a <laughs> city in London or in the UK. It's um, bread, uh, butter, and bacon. That's bacon it. Bag. Yeah, that's that's it's a bacon sandwich. <laughs> Yeah. Well, in the South, we put <laughs> jelly, bread, jelly, and bacon. Oh, okay. All right. Try it. With, with jelly. I guess the sweet and salty. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah. 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 But a bacon ba batty is just, yeah, it's a bacon sandwich. <laughs> I wondered what that was, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we already asked you about London. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Marisol wanted to know, I noticed that the intimate part didn't happen until about 70 to 85% of the book, mm -hmm. while many authors have it at 45 to 50% of the book. Is mm -hmm. that how most of your books are, or is this one different? Not that I'm comparing a slow burn is always yeah. welcome. Uh, no, um, it's not usual because I'm writing cliffhangers and in this case, a trilogy um, and there was a lot to set up. So I, I really leaned into the suspense elements for this particular series and world. Um, so it took longer um, because at the beginning of the book, uh, Livy has a boyfriend, <laughs> even mm -hmm. though they meet in the closet and P.S. they did have some smoochies. I did give some. I did give you some some dirty times. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, this is. Um, you know, this has happened. Uh, I think that the latest probably was Cheeky Royal, because that was that was late. I mean, and I've done books where it's in chapter one. Yeah. Um. I. You know. Uh, especially when it's um when it's a standalone, then it's like yeah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, midway point, but especially when it's a more complex story, especially if it's suspense related at all, then it's going to come later um, because you're setting up or there's some kind of element, but it, it just, it's what the story calls for. Um, in this case, it was a slow burn, but what a burn it was. I mean, I, I, like when you got there, you got there. Yep. <laughs> and I, I, had, I laughed out loud and my husband, I was in the uh, living room. We were watching TV and I was reading, of course. And um, when I got to the part where she wrote the handle off. <laughs> <laughs> now, you should know that I have done that before. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> you know, listen, listen, these things happen because you get curious and you're like, is that a touch something you're not supposed to touch? And then things break. But listen, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my in case you're wondering if my real life, it, you know, interjects itself yeah. in my stories, that would be a yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a yes. Well, you have to tell us how you did it. <laughs> um, uh, there was a, a quick round of like. Oh my god! I was at a friend's house and I was touching things I shouldn't have been. I was like, oh, do you have super problem? <laughs> but it was like some like thrift store or something fine. Oh. It was like a huge deal, but um hopefully there wasn't like some really expensive piece that was picked up at a thrift store for nothing. Um, <laughs> or discovered that it was priceless after that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. Okay, how did you, um, Melissa wants to know, how did you come up with the idea for the story? For Big Ben, ooh, um, well, I've always loved um, suspense. Uh, I was the only nine-year-old with the complete Agatha Christie collection. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've always loved suspense. And it's funny, in my early days, uh, Misty Evans is a great friend of mine and mentor. And so when we met, you know, and she was like, oh, you really should be writing suspense. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I could really handle it like the intricacies and but i always add suspense to every single book i don't even know why it happens but i'm like this is so boring someone should get shot at when <laughs> if 
And um, so for Ben, for Big Ben in this world in particular, I, you know, I started playing around with the idea like, oh, you know, like billionaires are always kind of like a hot trope. And I was like, oh, billionaires, they have all the money in the world. And that's kind of the thing. It's about the power. But I was like, what if there was something a billionaire couldn't get? Like, what would happen? You know, like one thing, usually it's like the woman's like, oh, you can't buy me. And it's that. But it's like, I'm, I'm going to make it more. I'm going to be like, no, but like they should get shot at. Um, and so I was like, what if he had to like get something for a purpose or a reason and he couldn't buy it? You know? Um, and so I was so like that, that was kind of this kernel of it. And then, um, I am obsessed with anything Robin Hood. Um, it's one of my big ids, like anything Robin Hood, it doesn't matter how bad the movie is, how bad the story play, whatever it is, I will watch it. I will consume it. I will read it. I don't care. Um, and so the idea of, you know, sitting from the rich to the porn, I was like, and I love that Robin Hood, the original Robin of Loxley. Mm -hmm figure um was a lord and i was like oh and so then it started to really coalesce and i really loved the idea and the other thing that i'm like super obsessed with is um is uh anything heist related anything i mean i will watch it all like you name a heist movie <laughs> i've seen it um like i mean my one of my all-time favorites just for like just like ah uh, the joy of storytelling is uh inside man directed by spike lee Clive Owen, who is such a daddy, and Denzel Washington, who is another daddy. And like, it was just so brilliantly acted and just like simplistic, but outstanding. And I was like, yes. Um, and then also I have a love of secret societies. And so like, I started to just kind of like play with these elements. And then when like the idea coalesced and I was like, oh my God, what if blah, blah, blah. And then what if this happened? And then it started to like build. And then I was like, okay, so you have three friends and it was supposed to be three standalones. And then I started to like really like build the story, and I was like, "That's that's more than three standalones." <laughs> yeah. So the elite mm -hmm. does it have a prequel to this? It does not. It does not. Um, uh, it, it's you know, it's because my, I always like want the story to be like romance focused. Um, I know people like it's funny. I saw I've seen some reviews of people like, but I want to know what happened before, and I'm like, you'll you'll don't worry, you'll get there, you'll find out what happened. <laughs> or just tell me this, just tell me really did. I, I, I keep reading <laughs> because I tell you, I'm kind of bonded with Toby, and I don't want him to be dead. It breaks my heart. I love that you bonded with a character who's like never actually on the page. I love that. I love it. I love it. I did. And when he said, when um, he said, you know, that well, T Toby doesn't have get to have children. And I was like, <laughs> so, and I'm like, he's got to be alive. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, uh, keep reading, keep reading. You never know. I mean, I haven't finished, uh, I haven't done um, Bridges books yet. Like East books are, are like kind of in the works, you know, uh, so I know where they're going, at least sort of. Um, but you know, you never know. Bridges books aren't, like the cliffhangers are cemented and the end end, like the end baddie is cemented. Um, but you know, anything could change. Keep reading. You never know. You might have given so me an idea. We, so we will find out what happened. Yeah. At, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. You'll find out. Fine. <laughs> but um, I would say, as a storytelling device, like giving the characters something to like coalesce and like circle their wagons around. Death is a good one, you know. It like it bonds you tightly. It's yeah. a good one to use. It's a heart puller for sure. Um, Melissa wants to know what are you currently reading? What am I currently reading? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I just finished. Um, because I get transference. Um, I usually can't read as I'm writing, but I do listen to audio. So let me just pull it up because I always forget names. Um, <laughs> no, it's really bad. Um, 
I just, I'm like, oh, this looks good. And then like, I somehow do not like ever remember. Um, the thing I'm obsessed with, okay, so let's see. I just did Dear Ava, Ilsa Mad Mills, which was really good. Um, the Hunter by LJ Shen, which was, I don't know, it's, it's, it's funnier than I'm used to from Lee, but that was also really good. I will tell you what I loved, The Hating Season by Kyla Lindy. That was amazing. Oh, also, what type of book was it? Um, the Hating Season is Enemies to Lovers. It's, uh, in her, like, seasons, like series um each book is a standalone so you don't have to necessarily have read um the one before um and then the, she has her next one coming out is the breaking season um so um they're like following this kind of like upper east side new york kind of crew um so that was enemies to lovers and excellent really good writing and then um i just uh I'm in the midst of Queen Move by my girl, Kennedy Ryan, which is just a heart strength puller. So uh, if you guys have are sleeping on Kennedy Ryan, you need to try that. Um, but yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, so that's what I'm reading right now or like what has been read or listened to recently. Oh, the other one that was amazing is The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa. That one was... If you love kind of like my sense of humor and that kind of like ta 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 like ta 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 ta, Mia Sosa, like you need to get on that. Um, she is it was amazing. I like when I listened to that, I was like, what? I sent her like a little fan note, and I'm like, listen, listen, great. Um, and then the other person I'm obsessed with is uh for those who love suspense is Juno Rushton. Now I always forget the titles. I'm I'm just trying to see if I can pull them up real quick. So I can give them to you, uh, Juno, yes, Nothing to Fear and Every Last Breath. Um, they are suspense, and ugh, I almost quit writing suspense after I read those. She, outstanding, like, outstanding, like, no lie, outstanding. I was just like, oh, how did you do that? So those are, those are my recommendations. That's what I've been um, digging into um when i'm not in the midst of writing these stories i'll have to check some of those things yeah no um is if you love suspense oh my god i bow down <laughs> <laughs> um where is one place you've always wanted to travel but you haven't oh i would love to do tahiti um like just specific islands i think just that kind of like lazy kind of warmth that kind of like gorgeous water um from what i've heard the people are really friendly and so like i've always 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 wanted to go to Hiti, fiji that whole span i've been to new zealand once but like i never i didn't even get to get off to go to like cook islands or anything like that so like oh. I to explore that area more i've always wanted to get in this yeah what's your favorite trope to write Ooh, um, enemies to lovers, probably. Um, it's easy <laughs> because it's the conflict writes itself. I mean, as long as it's a good reason to hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it makes it, it, it le automatically lends itself to like snappy that like, and I, I love a good banter. Like I love, like I, I love a specific kind of pacing. Um, and when I don't get it, I'm a little irritated. <laughs> um, but I like you can I can get a lot if it's even if it doesn't have like suspense or something in it. But like the banter is really good. Like you can tell the the re, the writer just was like on it that I'm hooked and I'm there for it. And that's super easy to do with enemies to lovers. Like as a writer, it makes it easy if they they hate each other and just like bicker back and forth. Because then you get like the one liners things and you're like, oh, that's awesome. And then you're <laughs> I love to turn bad boy. Oh yeah, you know a lot of people. That's that's a thing. It's funny. It's such a, it's such an if people are like, oh, antihero. But I get. I mean, it's fantasy, right? Because you like yep. you're like that bad boy. Everyone was like, stay away from him, and you're like, no, I'm seriously, stay away from him. <laughs> In a book, you can be you never like, want to stay away from the bad one. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I never had a bad boy phase. I married the nice guy. I didn't. I, I had zero interest in bad boys like whatever <laughs> like be like oh he's hot and like he looks like a prison sentence waiting to happen what is wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Well, I married my high school sweetheart. Oh, sweet. I love that. Now, 41 years later. <laughs> yeah. I haven't killed him yet. <laughs> I say that about my husband, too. We've been together 25 years, and I'm like, listen, you are still alive. You should be <laughs> your stars. Every night we go to bed, you never know if you're going to wake up again. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you plot out your stories or do you let your characters take you for a ride? If you do plot, did Libby or Ben do anything that was unexpected? Oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I'm a plotter. I'm a big time plotter. Um, I'm a plotter to the point that I, you know, I have been like a hardcore plotter that I'm like, I will not deviate. We are not deviating from this. We are not deviating. We are not deviating. And the stories have turned out fine. Um, but like, I think there's a magic in kind of listening to your characters because sometimes you get it wrong. Um, and I've, you know, I've done that before where I've written a book and I'm like, ah, oh, it feels flat. Mm, it's not right. Um, you know, back in the day, it was the book in particular that I did this with was um, London Calling, which eventually became rewritten as Royal Playboy and Playboy's Heart. Um, I initially, when I wrote that very first draft and even round, I did a full round of edits on it too. Um, I had a very specific idea for who Xandra was and it was flat and it did not work. And I, I didn't know why I didn't love the story. And um, I mean, it, like I hit all the beats exactly where I was supposed to hit them. And then I was like, no, it's not working. And I rewrote it. Like finally yeah. just letting him, like, I mean, even just reading the first chapter, it was like, how did I want to do this? And I mean, the and I, I had the first line in my head, which was, you know, now famously, pussy came easy. And it was such a Xander line. <laughs> and I, once I had that line and I let him do what he wanted, I rewrote that book in three days. Um, because... I could feel it. I knew where I'd gone wrong. Um, and once I knew, I knew how to fix it. But I mean, I think the key for me is yes, outline and know the path so that, because if I don't have a map, I can't even get in the car. Um, I have but, tried my best to plot. I just can't. I just um, can't. I mean, everyone's different. I mean, one thing I did, I did use, like, everyone's like, oh my God, you gotta, you gotta know everything. And I'm like, no, because there's a sense of discovery. Because sometimes I'll be writing and then I'll be like, oh, because I'll get an idea. Right. And I do the thing where I act as if. Act as if I've already made the change and go to the outline. And if I have to add anything to the outline to make that thing work, I do. But then I carry on as if I've made that change. And that if that happens in chapter 25, great. It happens for the next five chapters or whatever the case is. If it happens in chapter three, great. Um, but in revisions, I stop, stop, I make a note, add this to all of the whatever came before, and then I keep moving so that I can keep moving and then know that that has to get inserted somewhere along the way. I guess that's one one reason it takes me so long is because I do write, come up with it as I'm writing. I'll have in my head generally where I think the story's going. Mm -hmm. But then I'll write my first chapter, second chapter, and then it's like they go to left field. And then I have to go back and rewrite <laughs> to make it match up with that. And then I go, 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 go. And then I, oh, well, that's a good thing, too. I didn't see that coming. I'll go back. <laughs> I mean, and, that, and like everyone has their process. I mean, for me, my outlines are honestly, they're like generally bullet point. Like it's like, okay. I'll start and I'm like, okay, I know about how long I want it to be. Um, but that's always a lie. <laughs> always a work, work count. Um, I always somehow seem to end up around 85,000 words. doesn't matter what I do. Um, uh, sometimes I can get it at 75, but almost always. So like, it's always funny when like, I'll see reviews, people are mad. They're like, it was a cliffhanger. It wasn't even a whole book. And I was like, you've got 85,000 words. <laughs> And we're I'm just not happy, how, are we? I was like, I don't know how you, you still got a lot of words. Um, but 
you know, I have some books that are a little bit shorter and they always feel too short, but like the key to writing the shorter books is you've got one storyline, but I'm, I'm forever in there trying to add like other plot lines. I'm like, but then they got shot at. <laughs> Always. I did find out earlier, y'all, that she does love to shoot people. <laughs> I in know, her books. <laughs> I mean, sure, only in books. <laughs> um, let's see. I know of an author who knows her character's favorite ice cream, even if it doesn't make it into the book. Is there yeah. anything you know about your characters that don't make it into the books? Sometimes some, it depends on how they come to you. Um, sometimes like, it's funny. My, uh, Sierra Simone is a very good friend and we'll be sometimes talking about our characters and then she'll be like, what does he smell like? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, like sometimes it comes to me in the moment. Sometimes it comes to me later, but, and sometimes like you think of things that like, it's never, it's just, you need to know that about your character. So there's things like that. Like, I think in particular smell or, you know how we all have like our tics or things that we do that, you know, we don't even realize we're doing. Obviously I'm very African. I talk, talk with my hands a lot. Uh, <laughs> my husband is like, every time I get excited, he's like, he's like, oh, my African wife. And I'm just like, I can't do this. Um, so like, even if it's like, I know that about a character, um, I'll sometimes like usually I'm I, when I do it I'll make a character note because it's part of like who they are so it helps me build a better picture. But yeah, I know there's things I know about them that maybe I didn't have room for or didn't make the cut or whatever the case is. Well, I have to tell I'm going to tell something to my readers right now that I think is funny because my book Silent Surrender is at my editors right now. Huh. And um, it goes along with what you were just saying, but um, she uh, texted me and she said, are these people um, very proper? <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, why? Well, they're, they, um, he is speaking very proper. And I thought, got to think, I thought, yeah, in my head, he is, he's a prince. He is speaking. No, he doesn't. It, it just and I said I didn't even realize I was doing it. Really? That's just how he sounds. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they just come out. I mean, I yeah, think the, key is the writer to like listen to your character and listen to who they are trying to be. I mean, because I mean, I even when I wrote Cheeky Royal, everyone's like, "Well, he's a prince, so like, why is he on a cover shirtless?" And I was like, "Um, guys, uh -huh. he's undercover, trying to be." Like, <laughs> And then everybody was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. And I was like, yeah, he's he's undercover, man. He's like, yeah. you know, and then it's, I'm like, but that's just what he sounds like. That's what he looks like. That's, you know, he's, it's like, I was like, he's very Prince Harry, you know, before he remembered he was a prince. And it's very difficult to find cover art with <sighs> clothes on. <laughs> Oh no, you can find it. Um, you can absolutely find it. Um, the difficulty is having the face and the clothes body right. and the vibe all match what you're looking for. Those are the, those are the tricky, the sticky wickets. Yes. I mean, funny, like you'll get like readers who are like, but why did you use this cover? And you're like, dude, you, you don't, you don't know my pain. <laughs> you don't know the stock cover art hunt for cover model pain. You don't know this pain. <laughs> Well, I just had a recover done for Silent Surrender. And I just absolutely love it. Oh, awesome. That's the best I, you can like fall in love with. You're like, yes, this is it exactly. Yep. Um, what's your favorite part about writing and what's the hardest? Um, my favorite part is probably in that moment when that first draft is done. Um because it's like I've exercised those demons that have been yelling at me for the last several weeks or whatever. Um, and like, they're finally out. Um, because then I know that like, cause the, the number one thing I, I think I tell a lot of new writers is you can't fix a blank page is there's, you can't fix it. Like, I, I mean, sometimes the words are rough. They're so bad, but you can fix it. 
You can right. pick something that is on paper. You can always add to it. You can take away from it. You can change the words because even just seeing the words down on paper will trigger something to be like, oh no, but I could say it like this. You can fix anything that's on paper. Um, and so for me, that moment of knowing that like, at least the story is out, I can fix whatever I've put out. I mean, sometimes it needs fixing. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, Angie, my editor, often sometimes would be like, I don't know what we were doing here. <laughs> fix it. <laughs> and sometimes it requires like hauling chapters around. I mean, it it just is what it is. So um so I think that that's my favorite moment at the end, just knowing that they're just out, that the story is out and I can fix anything that I've done. But once again, I've made it to the end. Um, and then I've, I've said in my least favorite part is the revisions. Um, and that's my <laughs> internal revisions. Um, I, I don't mind an edit. I'm like there's people who hate, 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 hate getting edits back from an editor. Um, and, I'm, and I like a heavy handed edit too. I like, tell me what I did wrong. Tell right. me like, if it needs to be moved around, tell me. And I can do those in days. But a, an internal revision, it's my, mm, it's not, mm, not okay. Dig deep. Dig deep. <laughs> yeah, it's it's my least favorite thing. I don't love it. Well, um, Marisol, let's see. Yeah, Marisol asks or says, uh, reviews are a hot topic for authors. How do you deal with good or bad reviews? Oh, I don't read them. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I don't, you know, either way, I don't think they, and every author is different, but I personally don't think that they serve anything. Um, reviews I look at as for readers. Um, obviously, I strive and aim to write a good book that people are going to like. Um but at the end of the day, there's going to be people who don't connect with my voice or connect with the book or connect with the characters for whatever reason. Um, but I, it doesn't serve me in any way to read them <laughs> at all, positive or negative. Um, the negative reviews are just going to send me to a tailspin be, of like, why do I do this? <gasps> I quit. I mean, I like, and that, <laughs> that is take up time. That's just noise. Um, because this is the best job in the world. And so I'm not really going to quit. Um, but it just lost me three days of crying because someone gave me a three star because they were like, but she had a boyfriend who was the worst and she, you know, and she, you know, did the right thing when Ben kissed her. Um, <laughs> and so it's like, but she kissed him back. You know, but she did push him away. Like this is wrong. And then went to go break up with him. Like, so like, it's, and do you, you know, know like, what she had in her hand during that kiss? <laughs> no, that you know, it's see, he they didn't kiss in that first scene. She just had the pain, the 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 statue piece. They kissed in the closet, didn't they? No, they didn't. They did not. He nuzzled her neck, but they didn't kiss. In my mind, they kissed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what she said. In my mind, <laughs> yes, I mean it was super hot. But they didn't actually, so like it was one of those things. But um, like for me, it's the kind of it doesn't serve me, and all it does is spin me out. Um, and then also, I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm like, well, I got all these five stars, so clearly I don't need to keep working hard. I mean, I would never. Um, but I don't like blowing smoke up my own ass. Like I'm not real good with compliments either in person. <laughs> Like I, you know, it's like I'm like I'm a very um, I don't know if you've ever taken Becca Sims uh, Strength Finders course, but uh, my personality type is achiever, so I just want to cross the thing off. I don't need praise for it. Matter of fact, the praise makes me very uncomfortable. I just want to cross the thing off, and so five stars. Like I see them, and I'm like, great. That means people love the book. They connected with it. That means that's for me a data point that tells me to keep going with the series. Um, but it doesn't personally do anything for me. And I'm like, I, it's self-congratulatory and I'm not really into that. Um, so I just don't read them. I have, uh, my PR team will read them for me and pull the best quotes to use for ads to, you know, to 
like, and the thing is, like, I'll have people who read them, like, if I mess something up, so that I can know not to do that again. But that's rare. That hasn't happened in a long time. Where, like, I mean, I once did a book where uh, the woman was the billionaire. Mm. I learned very quickly readers are not here for that. <laughs> At least not my readers. My readers were not here for that. And so I've never done that again. I'm like, oh, thank you for letting me know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I had a whole series planned and the first book didn't go over very well. And yeah. I just loved it. I, I was so proud of that book, but it got really bad reviews. And I read them and I learned then. Don't, don't read, read them. It's I, lo it, I lost my heart for that whole series. Yeah. I mean, my readers know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, look, sometimes you write something that it's like super personal to you or something you really want to do and people aren't into it. And you're like, okay, fine. Um, and you know what I will do with those books? I sometimes will take them down, recover them, rebrand them, retitle them, fix the thing. If it's something to be fixed um, and then put it back out and people are like, this is great. And I'm like, mm -hmm. see you. <laughs> see you. That's a good idea. <laughs> you know, I mean, if it's, if it's worth your time to do that, you know? Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't read the negative ones. I don't have time for a three day spin out. Uh, my deadlines are too tight and you know, I've got family and all that stuff. Um, but I don't read the, I don't read the five stars either because it's, it's self congratulatory and I don't have time for that. So I, like, I have my PR team will like go and be like, okay, use these and I'll pluck them. I'll be like, okay, so these go on the Amazon site and these, oh, that's a good blurb for an ad, blah, blah, blah. But like, I don't read them. It's not, I mean, I check like the average stars and I'm like, okay, it's within a good error margin. Fine by me, carry on. Um, if it's not, then I'm like, I'll send someone, I'll be like, can you go look and be like, what don't they like? Yeah. Usually it's that it's a cliffhanger. <laughs> Um, Marisol wants to know, did you edit anything out of this book? Did I edit anything out? Yeah, lots. So much. Just I mean, even, does it have anything to do with Liv? It sure does. <laughs> how she is. <laughs> um, I mean, what's funny is things, I don't delete anything. I don't believe in that. Um, because sometimes like, a scene doesn't necessarily work for the book, but can work for either a bonus, something. Um, and so I don't delete anything. So there's a scene that I took out um, that, you know, for Elizabeth, that's um, going to tell you more about Toby. Um, I took it out of book one, um, but you'll see it again. So I off I edit things out. Well, of course. <laughs> we'll just have to Think. Is this <laughs> I just tell you to keep reading. Okay. Uh, your kiss scene was totally swoony. I love it when an author can take your breath away with just a touch, a caress, or a kiss. What goes through your mind when you're writing these scenes? Um, how do you mentally prepare for them, or do they just flow out of you? <laughs> oh flow out of me. That's hilarious. That's so sweet that you think I'm that, I'm that good. Um, I'm not Sierra Smo. <laughs> no, they do not flow out of me. Um, uh, and sometimes they are torturous. I, you know, some days, I mean, look, it's like, uh, okay, for those of you who are married, it's like when your partner is like, hey, and you're like, tonight? Constipated, gassy. You know, like you're in no mood for that shenanigans, but you still, I mean, it's still your job. Um, and so the thing is, I can always tell when I've written a clunky scene. Um, and then my editor, and the thing, the great thing is, is you can fix it later. So I'll send it with that clunky scene and be like, ah, I know I need to fix this. Um, and how, like, and then I'll fix it. And I'll be like in a better mood. And I'm like, oh, well, no, okay, no, no, I know what needs to happen. Um, or, um, what I often do if I'm stuck or like, just like not feeling writing those is I will go back to past books that I knew, like had some like super sexy scenes. I'll reread them and I'm like, it'll spark some ideas. Um, 
And then, like, you know, there's the old, like, writers these days are just like porn. <laughs> porn, <laughs> porn. They're like, it gets the ideas going, and you're like, why, well, yes. You know, I mean, it's like, yes, my name, my neighbor's hot, uh, whatever. But, like, I mean, for me, generally, like, I'm going at such a fast clip, and it, my standalones have maybe four to five scenes in them. So, Sometimes it feels like a lot. Um, sometimes I'm just like, I'm so done. And then other times I'm super excited to write it. It all depends on my mood at the time I'm supposed to write that scene. Um, sometimes I'll skip it. Yep. And I'll just insert love scene here. Yes. And then I send it to the editor and it comes back and she's like, okay, now you need to insert the love scene. And I'm like, <laughs> past Nana did not look after future Nana. This is terrible. <laughs> But, you know, I know it's coming. So, or like sometimes I'll like think about a scene and I'm like, oh, 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 or it'll spark. I'll be watching a movie. I'll be reading another book, another author's book. And I'm like, oh, that's why I couldn't get into it. Like I, I, this feeling I was looking for. Um, and then sometimes I'll just be like, I, or I'll just be asleep and be like, oh, I have an idea. And I get up and I'll make quick notes. And then in the uh -huh. morning I'll start to flush it out. So, um, yeah, I mean, I generally, because I want those scenes to be good and to evoke the right, yes, like you want it to be sexy and yes, you want it to be like, oh, that was hot. But it's also a specific like feeling you're looking for um, to really cement, because like all those scenes are really meant to cement another step in their relationship. Like, I don't believe in just injecting them to inject them. Although, you know, some readers would be like, this book is all sex, but maybe that's what the book calls for. <laughs> Um, and so like in it, cause I remember one of my earlier books, Sexy and Stilettos, there's a lot of sex in it. Um, but every scene cements them further because her whole thing is she feels like she's like really uptight and like really just like list focused and like never, never loosens up, never has fun, never. And she's like paired with this playboy who's like, he's all fun and no responsibility and blah, blah, blah. But like every scene cements and changes both of them just a little bit. And so I think that it was key to have a lot of love scenes, you know, whereas other books, it's like maybe three scenes in, in a book, but um, it all depends. But like, I, if I'm not feeling it, I mean, I still do my job, but I know that that's going to get edited to <laughs> be better. Well, kudos on this book. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, what what's your favorite meet cute? Your favorite romance trope? Your all time favorite romance book or writer? That was a lot. Uh, I'm so, the meet cute one of mine or one that I've read or seen. Either we'll go with either. They didn't specify. Um, uh, one of mine is easy. Ben and Libby's is. To me, one of my favorites because it was so you like for me. I was like, oh, that's uh -huh. you know. Um, and I will say that I like I'm obsessed with this show. It's called Early Bird or, or Kenzie Kush. Um, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, it's a Turkish soap opera like rom com. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I remember like watching that and like they have this their meet cute, which is kind of interesting. Um, but like that kind of like spurred the idea. Like I already had the idea, but then I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, it's better if they don't know each other. Cause I was at first going to have them have met, like have met already and already be sniping and hate each other and nah, 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 nah. and then meet the way that they did. Um, but then I was like, no, after I saw Kenzie Kush, I was like, it's better if they don't know each other so much better. Um, and so like that kind of stuff will, will mix that. So that's one of my favorites. Um, all-time favorite romance book. I mean, Pride and Prejudice. I mean, I'm an Austin awesome fan. Like, it's just, it's like, the, it's the, it's like the, the, the basis for all enemies to lovers romances right. ever written. Ever. <laughs> ever. It's I, just. Well, like, I just got into Outland. Oh yes, the, you know, the, the show on TV. I've never read the book. I had never seen the show until about a month, maybe two months ago. So. Yeah. You know, I'm not. I don't normally like. I used to be big into historicals. I don't normally read a lot of historicals now. 
but I'm not generally into time travel romances, but everyone's talking about it. So I'm maybe this summer. You're going to have to. I was the same way. I don't like paranormal. I don't like time travel. I was the exact same way. It's okay. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, every, I, it's, I mean, everyone loves it. Like I'm, I'm willing to give, the thing is, I'm usually the person who's like, I'll try anything once. Um, don't hear that. He's like, really? No. <laughs> um, but I mean, I'll try anything once. So like, I'll, I'll give it a go this summer. I'm, I'm looking for new binge things. So yeah. yeah. I mean, hey. Um, okay. So that was what was the more of the other oh, question? My favorite trope. Favorite romance trope. Yeah, it's enemies to lovers. Oh no, no, no. That's enemies to lovers. My favorite to write because it's so easy. But I do love friends to lovers. That's like if it is a friends to lovers story, I'm there every single time. I don't care how bad it is because I was that girl who was always the best friend. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, and like, I'm like, this is wish fulfillment to the max. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm lovers, I'm here. I'm here. Get my wine. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> and your favorite rope will, you already answered that one too. Okay. okay. Let's see. Um, let me, we're running way out of time. We have one minute. But let me just get through the see if we have any questions. Um, are all of your books cliffhangers? No, no. Um, I didn't even I've never even written a cliffhanger up until two years ago. Um Maybe I had like a couple of light ones. I try. I tried cereals. Those you remember when everyone was like, "Oh, cereals are the way to go," and they were like all short, fourteen k or whatever. Um, I tried, and I just really didn't love the storytelling format of a cereal. Um, but when I wrote Cheeky Royal, um, that I'm not going to ruin it. Uh, but the cutoff mark uh, where they split off was actually my black moment. Um, and I was like, I was like, okay. And then I like, I had like whatever left of the book and I was like, okay, I'm going to write this. But like, it kept kind of eating at me because I was like, mm, and I was like, that's the perfect place for a cliffhanger. Like the perfect, like it was just, it, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a perfect black moment too, but it was the perfect spot. And I still had a lot to tie up because like I had like the whole suspense element, you know, who's trying to like kill people, the intrigue. And I was like, oh, it's going to be super long. And I was like, that's really because when I looked at how much I also had to write, I had like that one was like a 70K mark, I want to say. And I still had to write at least 40 to 50K to like close out all my suspense, like to loop everything off. And I was like... That's A, too long. <laughs> and B, if I go that long, that's not the cliffhanger spot. Right. And then I was going to drag it out. And I was like, ah. And so I just was like, no, just go for it. And so I did. And that's how I ended up writing cliffhangers. Um, but, I, you know, I'm currently working on, you know, single title projects right now that are also going to come out. So now it's you just got to pay attention. I mean, I always... <laughs> Readers, read all, read the blurb all the way to the bottom. And if it says duet a trilogy, it's a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. Um, it'll tell you if it's a standalone. We'll, we'll say standalone. If it doesn't say standalone, it's a cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> Note to readers. Um, so read all the way to the bottom because usually people like me, I'll put, I'll put it in the blurb and I'll be like, you know, I'll have the hero talk to me and be like, ladies, I know you want to know how this ends. Follow me. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I tell you, but make sure you're, but you're paying attention to that. But yeah, no cliffhangers. Like I love the style of for, the storytelling that I'm able to do. It forces me to be tight. It I can have no wasted room. I can have no wasted words. I can have no wasted beats. And so I really, especially for suspense, I really like how it forces the doling of information. It's like. And then the the asking of questions. Um, yeah, I know you were asking Elizabeth the if there was a prequel, and I'm like, nope, because I start you off asking a crap ton of questions, and you should. Yes. 
Um, especially because it's suspense too. So you're asking the questions, asking the questions, asking the questions, and then I answer a question. And then I leave a whole bunch unanswered, but then I ask you another question. And then uh, you're asked, and then I answer a question. And then I ask you another one. I'm like, I'm answering little ones along the way because that's, it forces me to do that. And so I love that style of storytelling. It makes it really interesting and really fun. But, so good. Uh, oh, thank so you. Good. Thank you. But I am uh, writing it alone right now. I'm in the midst of some. So, so tell us what's uh, coming. What's next for you? What's next? So what the benefactor, look for? Yeah. So the benefactor book two. Find out what happens to Livy. Who's in the apartment with her? <gasps> Does she survive? That would be a really weird trilogy if she did not survive. <laughs> but who's Does in the Toby apartment? rescue her? <laughs> Keep reading. Um, so the benefactor releases on June 9th and then for her benefit, uh, releases on August 18th. And then, uh, following that, um, is we start to see, uh, East and his books and what's going on for him. So East will be, uh, October. I don't really have a date yet. I just know the month. Um, but East will be, uh, the, the October book. And then that's, you know, where we'll, we'll end for the year. So that's what's going on. But I've got, um, a fun oh, COVID project. With, yes. East is also a trilogy. a trilogy. Um, yeah. Uh, and don't worry, bridge. We'll see him too. Um, and, uh, I've got, a project with Carrie and Ryan, which is a series of standalones, a current written project with Carrie and Ryan. Um, also going to be Royals, brand new Royals, brand new world. Um, called Royal Line. You can get that on pre-order now. Um, all these books are available for pre-order, so you can grab those. Um, but yeah, so those, that's what's all in the works right now. And, Will we uh, see anything with Drew? With Drew? Keep reading! Remember, Drew is married with kids, so... I know, I know! I know, so um, so it's, it's always a little, like, it's so funny, because I, like, whenever I introduce characters, everyone's like, well, what about this guy? And I'm like, I have a plan for him. Do not worry. Drew's going to end up where Drew ends up. It's going to be fine. <laughs> but we want to know now. <laughs> I know, which is, you know, part of the question asking. <laughs> you know what's funny? Sometimes I don't really know or have clarity. Drew, I know where he's going. Um, East, I know where he's going. Bridge, I know, like, where they end up. Like, all of them, I know exactly where they end up. Um, what happens to them on the way is what is usually the mystery. But don't worry, the 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 London Lawrence will be just fine, mostly. <sighs> Occasionally shot at, <laughs> and I'm assuming there'll be more shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe a stabbing. I'm gonna mix it up. You oh know? my gosh, it's stabbing. Maybe some hands and hands. Don't worry. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to mix it up. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. You guys have been great. I had so much fun. I did. I, it, I just love this. This is so much fun. I get to talk to, to authors that I have loved and admired for years. And, and um, I, so I just thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Yes. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we talked about a uh, giveaway for your group. I have a copy of Big Ben available, so you and I can talk okay. after on how okay. to get you a signed copy of that. Um, okay. But yeah, I'd love to send one to a lucky winner. Excellent. Sounds good. We'll talk. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you again for having me. You guys have all been great. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for listening. Me Please battle. come back anytime. We will be Absolutely. so happy to have you just come and hang out, hang around with us. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Wasn't she awesome? I just love her. Oh, okay, so I'll ask one more time for you to put a number in between 1 and 100. And I will select a winner for a signed copy of Silent Surrender when I get them. It's going to be probably about two weeks after it releases. So I'll give you time to go ahead and put in a number. 
and then we'll um, select our winner. I haven't even written the number yet. I better do that. Um, and let me tell you who is going to be our uh, featured author for next week. Now, I cannot tell you the book that we're going to read yet because um, I can't, I have not heard from, just checking my emails to see if by chance I had received an email back, but I haven't. So um, I'm going to get with you about what book title we're reading, but our featured author for the month of June is author Julie Huss or J.A. Huss. Um, if you are not familiar with her, I suggest that you um, check her out because I just love her books. Um, they are very moving and they're not light books. They are, um, you will go on a roller coaster ride of emotion when reading her books. And it's, it's just very emotional and it tugs on your heart and it makes you want to cry and it makes you want to throw the book against the wall. I mean, it's just, that's how um, filled with emotions her books are. So um, she had uh, suggested one book and I have asked her if we could do my favorite book of hers. So I haven't heard back from her yet to see if we can do that. So I'll post it tomorrow. Um, you know, in all the regular places on this post, and you can also find it on my uh, web page under our reader group, um, just like normal. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the number for tonight. The winning number is 30. So give me time to find out who that who was closest to 30. And I will post the winner on the post as well. So if nobody has any other questions or anything for me, just put them in the comments and I'll answer you. I'll probably will not come back on until in the morning. So I'll answer all your questions or whatever in the morning. So thanks for being here, guys. And thanks for all your questions. And um, I, I just think we had, we, I had such a great time with uh Nana, which I called her the wrong thing. I'm so sorry that I did that, but you know, it's a Southern thing, evidently. So I'm going to say goodbye for tonight, and we will see you um, next. Our next book club meeting is June 29th, but I'm probably going to be doing a live around June 5th for the book release that I'm ex super excited about. So, um, you know, I'll tell you about all this in the group. So don't worry about it. And we will chat again. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.